free your mind. What's going on everybody, Corey James here, and today's mystery, we explore the possibility that the world we see around us, our very existence, is all just a computer simulation. So let's take that red pill, follow the little white rabbit, and let's see how deep this hole really goes. Let's get to it. It's hard to argue against the possibility that all of us are not just the creation of some kid in a parent's basement programming up a world for their own entertainment. So just about everybody has seen the movie The Matrix, but for those of you who haven't, how is that even possible? The movie is centered around the concept that human beings have been conquered by machines and now live in a computer simulation so that these machines can harvest our bodies like batteries to use our energy so that they can continue to live? I don't know if a machine lives, but... Now the concept that this fictional movie could actually be our reality is definitely a hard pill to swallow. However, since it's released nearly 20 years ago, many scientists and physicists and people with really smart brains have made numerous discoveries and come up with numerous theories that suggest the concept of our reality all being a computer simulation could actually be possible. And then you throw in a lot of the videos we see posted all over the internet and, well, it becomes a very intriguing topic that we're going to get into right now. First proposed by Oxford philosopher Nick Bostrom in 2003, what he called his simulation theory or simulation hypothesis spawned from what he called his trilemma problem in regards to the possibility of a post-human civilization existing and whether or not that post-human civilization would create what he called an ancestry simulation. Bostrom's trilemma problem argued one of three seemingly unlikely propositions is almost certainly true. Number one, the fraction of human level civilizations that reach a post-human stage is very close to zero. Or two, the fraction of all post-human civilizations that are interested in running simulations of their evolutionary history is very close to zero. Or three, the fraction of people with our kind of experiences are currently living in a simulation are very close to one. So basically what this all means in a nutshell is either human beings go extinct or we reach a post-human level civilization that is capable of unlimited computing power. Now, what makes this entire theory freaking insane is that in 2008, theoretical physicist S. James Gage Jr. actually discovered evidence that this shit just might be true. This con the mathematical context of such equations, we have discovered that there are mathematical structures that are indistinguishable from error correcting codes as does occur in digital um, information transmission and uh, establishing reliable digital information trans, uh, transmission. And because of this, many people have uh, concluded that the work that I and my team um, completed means that the universe in which we live uh, must resemble the science fiction movie, The Matrix. Now this discovery sent shockwaves throughout the scientific community, leading many to conclude, but all to consider, that the cosmos could be digital in nature, which would imply that our current reality and everything we experience is also digital and based in computer code. Now, unlike the matrix in which human beings are grown in endless fields and then plugged into this simulated reality, so basically the machines can use us like batteries, and unlike Bostrom's theory in which post-humans are running simulations to better understand their ancestors, other theorists and brilliant minds such as Elon Musk believe this simulation theory is much less complex and easier to explain, and to do so, well, just look at our current video games. That, that 40, called 40, 40 years ago, we had Pong, like two rectangles and a dot. Now, 40 years later, we have photorealistic 3D simulations with millions of people playing simultaneously, and it's getting better every year. Mm -hmm. And soon we'll have virt you know, virt virtual reality, we'll have augmented reality. Um, if you assume any rate of improvement at all, um, 
then the games will become indistinguishable from reality. So, so given that we're clearly on a trajectory to have games that are indistinguishable from reality, and those games could be played on any set-top box or on a PC or whatever, and there would probably be you know, billions of such uh, you know, computers or set-top boxes, it would seem to follow that the odds that we're in base reality is one in billions. Now let's assume for a moment that this post-human civilization does exist and let's assume that they can simulate not only us but the world around us. Their intellectual and technological capabilities would be so unbelievably far advanced that we can't even comprehend the abilities they would have and human civilization today would basically view these post-humans as godlike. Consider this. Counting every operating interaction, the human brain functions at about 10 to the 17th power or 100 million billion operations per second. There are 30 million seconds in a year and let's assume the average human lifespan is a generous 60 years and remember we want to simulate all of human history so let's be generous again and call it 100 billion people. The math works out to be 30 million times 60 times 100 billion times 100 million billion. You guys handle this one and leave the answer in the comments below, but basically you would need a super high-end quantum computer the size of a large city. And coincidentally, it is this high level of technology and knowledge that skeptics claim is actually one of the biggest issues with the simulation theory. A super intellectual post-human civilization that is capable of creating an unlimited computing power. There would be no way that intellectual post-human civilization could possibly comprehend how our consciousness works today. Think of it like an ant going to an amusement park and a human being trying to explain to that ant what an amusement park is. This could be the smartest freaking ant you've ever met in your life, but there would be no way possible for that ant to understand what the purpose of an amusement park is. However, there is a counter argument to this argument and well, it's pretty much the same argument. How could we today possibly understand what a post-human civilization's mind consciousness is like to assume that they couldn't simulate our current consciousness and mind today? And we can go back and forth on this whole thing. The point is the simulation theory, the possibility that we could be living in a computer simulated world human beings themselves could be computer simulations is actually a possibility unfortunately we will never know this for a fact because if we are a computer simulation well they would put constructs and blocks up to prevent us from ever discovering that and if we did discover it well we would just be reprogrammed and forget that we discovered it so the whole thing's pretty moot but still a very fascinating topic that I would love to know what you guys think about leave some comments below and let me know what you think about the possibility that our current reality is all just a computer simulation. That's gonna do it for me on this one, guys. Thank you so much for coming by, checking out my video. I am still super, super new at this whole YouTube thing, and I would really love to grow this channel, so if you could, massive favor, that icon that probably just clicked right over here, right there, you see it? Give it a click, go to my channel, hit that subscribe button, keep coming back for more videos. Once again, guys, thank you so much for coming by. My name is Corey James, and I'm out.